This video is brought to you by expressvpn.com forward slash duty. Hey guys, it's a guy in the studio. I am back again. Now, I said to you in the last video to email in some ghost stories, paranormal things, alien abductions, and all that good stuff. And oh my goodness, you didn't disappoint. In fact, hundreds of you have emailed in. So many of you emailed in that we have created a new email address for you to email these stories into. So in future, if you want to email in your ghost stories, paranormal stories, anything centered around the niche of this channel then please email them into dutystories at gmail.com anyway without further ado I'm going to get into today's video what I have for you today are five ghost stories that are going to keep you up at night these were all sent in by you guys and I've handpicked the creepiest ones and we're going to kick off with Zayden's imaginary friend hello duty before I start this, I just want to add that I may forget some details on this story because I'm going to tell you this story in different points of view, my own experience of the situation, my mother's and my father's. When I was younger, around 10 or 11, I used to have an imaginary friend called John. I don't remember where the name come from for my imaginary friend. The earliest memory I have of John was when we were both playing with my toy cars as a child. Anyway, I told my mum and dad about John. The only concern they had was maybe I was a bit too old to have an imaginary friend because my sister had an imaginary friend about seven years old, but grew out of it very quickly. One day, my mum asked me, Zayden, do you see John? And I said back to her, yes. I can't tell you what he looks like though because he told me not to tell you. A few months or so went by and I was still imagining this John character until John didn't become exclusive to me. My mum had her first encounter with John. She used to work at a bakery opposite our house and she always used to come back to the house to check on me and my sister while my dad was at work because she wasn't too far so it wasn't like she had to turn any corners. She had her eyes on the house at all times. One day my mum come back and my sister was at a friend's house so it was only me so to be safe, she told me to go to the bakery with her because she didn't want her youngest to be there alone, I guess. However, my mum would go back to the house if she needed any extra things for the bakery. And my mum swears this next bit is true. My mum walked into the house and accidentally tripped over, but she said it felt like a push, something forcing her to the floor. She got back up and went to get what she needed. As she went to walk out, she tripped over the exact same spot, once again with that forceful push, sending her to the ground. My mum came back to the bakery and she told her colleagues. I overheard it and told her, oh, that's John, he likes to do that. But I don't remember having the conversation with John, but I do remember telling my mum that John likes to push people over. My dad has never been open to the concept of ghosts or the paranormal. He's never had a reason to believe it. So this whole John thing was just a silly tale for him. And he was very vocal about how silly myself and my mum was about these encounters. One day my dad was coming back from a funeral. It was his best friend's dad's funeral. He was quite close to him. He came back and he swears to have heard me shouting, Dad, upstairs. He goes upstairs as you would do, but I wasn't in my room or any of the upstairs rooms. This confused my dad, so he went back downstairs and saw my mum and told her what happened. My mum then told my dad I was in the garden. My dad came to the garden and asked me if I shouted his name and told him no, I didn't. A few days after this, my dad woke up in the middle of the night and needed to use the toilet. When he went to open the bathroom door, it seemed like someone was holding it from the inside. No matter how much strength he put into opening the door it simply would not open as my dad gave up and walked away the door opened but the tap was running hot water this startled my dad and immediately turned the tap off and woke up my mum they both spoke about this at length and to be honest it was quite loud and it caused me to wake up i walked into their room and i simply said john can hear you talking about him and once again i don't remember any conversation with john apart from playing with my toy cars but i do remember telling them these things now at this point it may seem like a stupid 10 year old just making things up because my mind is still very naive however my parents were convinced that something was up with this john character they asked my sister if she ever saw him if anything strange had ever happened to her and she said no my mom went a step further and asked the neighbors they knew nothing so she went a little bit further and asked the whole street until one man recalled a John living in our house. The gentleman who recalled this was called Brian. He was 89 at the time and had lived in the house his whole life. The house had been passed down to him for generations. And he was the one that told us that there was a gentleman there called John Jardell. He said that he was quite an unsociable man and that he was very strange and never let anyone into his house. But what he told my mother next has scarred our whole family forever. It turns out that John Jardell was a convicted rapist and kidnapper. Now is my imaginary friend the apparition of John Jardell or is it just a coincidence? 
So there we go, that was Zayden's imaginary friend. Was John Jardel still haunting the house after his death? Or was it simply a coincidence that Zayden's imaginary friend was called John? To play devil's advocate, John is a very common name. But obviously for a 10 year old to randomly pick that name? What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Okay, next up is a little bit different, guys. This is a voice clip from my cousin's partner, Michael. Now, obviously, I've known Michael for many, many years now. He's an absolutely amazing guy, and he's, a, he's, he's got some amazing stories as well. He used to be a prison officer at Blunderstone Prison, and after they shut down Blunderstone Prison, he actually took me round there and told me some amazing stories about the place. He messaged me the other day because he was watching the ghost documentary that I made last year, and he sent me this voice clip of a very weird paranormal experience he had when training to become a prison guard. I think you guys are gonna love this, so I'm just gonna leave the floor to Michael. I, I know somewhere really fucking haunted, and I don't believe in ghosts and all of this shit, right? When I was training to be a prison officer, you'd done eight weeks at the training school, then you'd done a week back at the prison, then you'd done another five weeks, I think it was, at the training college. And the training college I went to was at Straddleshaw, which was a high point prison. And High Point Prison back in World War Two was an old um, RAF base. And um, we were fucking doing our training at this course. And I said, the arse end of nowhere, we were fucking bored. So I said to this like caretaker of this like school, because you stayed over there as well, you didn't come home. And I said to him, I said, look, man, I said, have you got any objections? Whether I hook up the PlayStation in the classroom tonight to the big projector, I said, I'm going to put a DVD on me and the lads are going to watch it. And this old boy was like, that's fine, he said, but make sure you tidy up because I should have let you in. I was like, look, man, don't worry about it. We're going to tidy up. Anyway, we start watching this DVD and there's five of us sat in like this row watching this fucking film. And um, you know when you sit at home and you know that somebody's walked in your living room, but you haven't got a look. You just know that somebody's walked in. You've not heard them. You just sensed them kind of thing. Well, I felt that somebody had walked in this room, right? And that made me sort of like sit on edge, literally sat on edge. So I sat on the edge of my chair and my mate Jack O'Hama was with me, he runs Inga Simon in Galston. And he was sat next to me, he went, uh, all right, Mickey, I'm like, nah, mate, I ain't. I said, I feel like somebody's standing right over my shoulder. I said, that's fucking freaking me out. I says, um, he went, piss off, really. I'm like, honestly, mate, I sort of don't like it. I said, and now I've just said that, I said, I've got like this weird, intense burning in my neck. I said, like, I've just rubbed deep heat in myself. He was like, fuck off. And that sent a shiver down my spine. And as I'd done that, I went, fuck off, like that. And I stopped and it disappeared. Next day, there was one of the cleaners there and she'd been cleaning there for years. And I called her and I said, look, I said, do you mind if I just ask you a quick question about this place? She went, yeah, of course you can, my love. What's wrong? And I went, how long have you been cleaning? She went, oh, I've been cleaning here for 30 odd years, looking after you boys. I went, oh, okay. I says, you ever seen anything strange? And as soon as I said that, mate, you should have seen her face. She saw I was on the back foot. She went, um, why? Why'd you ask that? I went, look, I said, we was in there last night. I said, I know we shouldn't have been in there, but we were watching a DVD. And I told her what happened. She went, look, she said, I refuse to clean in that room. She said, I will not go into the mock prison landing either. She said, which I'm not going to go into. She said, I don't want to talk about it. And as she was walking away, she went, I just want to remind you. She said, there's a plaque at the front of the building here. She said, where an RAF squadron went on a bomb and run of a Germany in World War II and they never come back. But mate, something happened in there and that was just weird. So there we go, guys. What do we think of Michael's story? When he sent me that the other day, I had two thoughts in my head. First one was that is absolutely horrific, especially when the cleaner reinforces his fears about the situation. That's what really got me. And the other thought was that I know for a fact, knowing some of Michael's stories about his days as a prison officer, as well as the story he just told, and he said it's not the only creepy thing that's happened to him in his career as a prison officer, it made me think Michael will be an amazing guest for my new podcast that is coming very soon. The studio is currently being built and I'm very excited for it. But anyway, back to the video. Michael, thank you so much for that voice clip, mate. I really do appreciate it. Okay, this next story comes from Ella Miller and she says, hi, my name's Ella. I've just watched your latest video and thought I'd send in my story that still freaks me out to this day as I can't think of any logical explanation behind how or why 
this happened. She also says take a shot every time she says house in this story. So you can take a shot every time she says house if you want. As a kid, I lived in this house with my mum and stepdad that was on the grounds of a disused manor house, which was called Horsegate House. It was built in 1865 and I believe Queen Victoria stayed there a few times. The stables eventually got converted into a row of little houses, which is where I lived. It was also a place for troops to stay during World War II and was a children's nursery for 20 years from the 1950s. I've attached some pictures to give you more of an idea of it. The first one is from back in the day when it was still in use. The second is the houses that used to be the stables and the third is the house today. It's quite hard to see but I've circled the door which is actually chained up that leads to the alleyway where this thing happened. So I just want to say about the actual house that is the most like stereotypical haunted mansion. I want to go there. All these stories are just making me more and more excited for the exploration element of this channel which is going to come to life as soon as corona lockdown is over. I cannot wait. Back in 2010 I was on my summer holidays and my cousin came down to stay. We used to hang out with a few kids from the area, climb trees, build dens, that sort of thing. One late afternoon we decided it would be a good idea to get around the back of this place to see if we could get in. It was quite famous locally. I remember being well chuffed being able to say I lived next door to it. There were rumours that other people had got in and that it was still a really well intact with a big grand staircase in the middle. We really wanted to go in and explore. I can't say I blame you. I would be exactly the same. In fact, I do want to go there, like I just said, right now and go and explore the place. On the other side of the houses to where we live was a car park that had a chain link fence and a row of fir trees which ran down one side. At some point, someone had cut a hole in the fence which led through to the back of the houses. This was the way we were going to try and get in. You couldn't just waltz up to the main entrance as that was boarded up and there were seats CCTV cameras everywhere out the front. When you got through the fence, you were at the alleyway that ran between one side of the house and the row of fir trees in the car park. This alleyway was eerily quiet because any breeze or wind was completely blocked out. One afternoon, we went round to this car park, ducked under the fence and were scoping out this place. All of the windows were boarded up, but there were little gaps where people had hacked at them with axes or something. The day this happened, it was getting dark and we were all starting to feel a bit uneasy with it being so quiet. I mean, we were kids on the grounds of an 18th century mansion that hasn't been used for decades so it was pretty freaky. I wanted to lighten the mood so I said to my friends that I wish we had some music on right now and this is when it got weird. All of a sudden, literally the second I mentioned music, this sound played out from inside the house, inside this abandoned mansion. All I can describe it as is a bunch of people blowing a single note on a trumpet at once. Imagine five people who don't have a clue how to play a trumpet all blew on them at the same time. It only lasted for a second or so, but the craziest part was that we all heard it and we all looked up in the same direction to where the sound was coming from. I remember us all looking at each other, colour drained from our faces. We all screamed, legged it back under the fence and sprinted home as fast as we could. I would have brushed it off as my overactive imagination if it had only been me that had heard it. There was nowhere else it could have come from. No other buildings or people around. It was so loud and clear as though it happened in a room on the next floor up on the side where we were stood. I'd like to think if it was ghosts, they were just trying to make a bunch of kids slightly less scared by playing us some music on their ghost trumpets, but other than that, I genuinely can't think of any explanation to this. Why do we hear the sound of trumpets the second I mention music? No one had a phone on them, so it couldn't have been that. It sounds kind of funny now I'm writing it, but that honestly shat me up. My mum is pretty spiritual and believes that there could be a whole other realm we don't understand so that just feeds into my freaked outness even more this place has since been turned into flats I know I'm sure as hell will never be moving into one. Anyway, that's my kind of ghost story. Feel free to try and debunk this. I would actually really be grateful for a logical theory. Guys, in the chat, if you can think of a logical theory behind this one, that would be amazing. I personally can't. I won't lie to you. I've been trying to think for a while now as to why you would hear the sounds of trumpets. The moment you mention music, it's very, very odd. Because you couldn't put it down to like birds or pipes or creaking or anything like that if it's the sound of a sharp trumpet being blown very very weird and finally we are finishing with jake 
who has two very short stories from a care home that he is currently working at. And actually one of these stories happened on the day he sent in this email, I believe it was last Friday. But he says, where do I start with these? I've been at the home for around two months and it's been mental, but I'll give you the two most spooky. Number one is called, he frightened you, didn't he? It was 1 a.m. I was on the night shift and cleaning down one of the kitchenettes on one of the units. I noticed that I could hear some deep labored breathing coming from the center of the lounge. Everyone was in bed and sleeping. No one could have been making the breathing noises from that area of the room. I decided to ignore the noise, probably best to, but I checked all around the rooms in the area just to be sure, but they were all fine. Just like that, the breathing stopped. So I carried on cleaning for another half an hour. As I was on my way out of the unit, I saw one of the residents was sat awake in their chair. I popped my head around the door and asked if they were okay. She turned and looked at me and said, he frightened you, didn't he? She chuckled to herself slightly, but I don't know how long for. I more or less bolted back to the office. And then he simply says, fuck that. I didn't think that anything could happen to me that would be scarier than that encounter, but I was wrong. This one is called Get Out Of Me. This happened today, and I have no fucking idea what could have caused it naturally. It only adds up to some sort of possession. There is a lady in the home who just sits in her room, but she folds herself up like she's trying to fit into a box. That is her thing, she just does that. Nothing was out of the ordinary today until I took her lunch in for her. Her head shot up and stared towards me. She immediately began screaming, help, help, get it out. Help me, you have to help me, get it out. This was spooky, but she is known to have a scream and a shout every now and then. But then, get out of me. As soon as she finished screeching that sentence, her heavy fire door slammed shut. There was no breeze, no wind, all her windows were closed and I was in the room. There is no way I would miss wind strong enough to slam a fire door. Once again, I bolted. The timing, the screeching, the speed of her looking up when I entered the room. The other carer I was working with was staring at the door in silence when I came out. She was just as scared as I was. She too felt there was no breeze, but she heard the screaming and what the lady had said before the door slammed. Fair to say, I'm not looking forward to my night shift on Saturday now. Jake, if you're watching this, first of all, thank you so much for the email, mate. Let me know, how did your Saturday shift go? I would love to know. Guys, let me know down below. What was your favorite story from this video? What do you think of the stories I just read you from the care home? I would love to know. Also, hit that like button, guys, because it really does help the channel out. Like I said, guys, stories at gmail.com is the new place for you to email in all of your paranormal, creepy stories. They can be true stories from yourself, or they can be stories that you've heard or read on the internet, I'd love to get them all. The web show on Wednesdays will now be your ghost stories, paranormal stories. We had an amazing web show yesterday. So yeah, if you want your story read, either in a video or on the web show on Wednesdays live, 7 p.m. on YouTube, it's dudystories at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's emailed in so far. Thank you to everyone who's been involved in this video today. Guys, if you want to support me, Patreon is an amazing way to do that link for that is down below. Also, if you want to watch me on twitch.tv forward slash duty rhino, I stream lots of stuff. I stream documentaries. I stream all spooky stuff, horror gaming, Call of Duty, GTA 5, lots of fun stuff. Twitch.tv forward slash duty rhino. If you have Amazon Prime, you get a free Twitch Prime subscription that you can give to any Twitch streamer that you like. It's a free subscription for you. It helps the streamer out financially and you get lots of added bonuses for being a subscriber for absolutely free if you have Amazon Prime. So if you have that, feel free to sling it my way or to your favorite streamer over on Twitch.tv. Mine is Twitch.tv forward slash duty rhino. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. Like I said, this video is brought to you by expressvpn.com forward slash duty for that you can get netflix us you can protect your data all your pictures all your prize possessions online all of your passwords and stuff express vpn have got you covered and have got your stuff on lockdown no one is going to be able to hack you or anything like that so that is expressvpn.com forward slash duty you get 49 percent off three months for free so if you want to do that the link for that is down below. That's it guys, I'm out of here. I'll be back very soon with another video. Thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you soon. Sweet one, geese. Also, good luck sleeping tonight.